Hi there and welcome to this introductory video to MongoDB database for SQL probes. This video clip complements a series of blog posts I wrote about starting out with MongoDB NoSQL database. Um, so to find out more and to read other MongoDB related posts, please check out my blog at bicortex.com. Okay, let's get started then. In order to run MongoDB in the local environment, we first need to download it and install it. MongoDB is a breeze to provision, so let's go to the official MongoDB website and the download section and get the latest production release for the Windows system. By the way, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be running MongoDB on my laptop with Windows, Microsoft Windows 8 OS but you should be able to replicate this process on pretty much any modern Windows machine. I'll click on download to fetch the latest version and pause the video for a short time, resuming when the download has finished. Okay, we're back and what you can see here in my download folder is a zipped up file containing all the bits and pieces. I will extract its content into my C drive like so. I'll simply put it in a directory called MongoDB, which I previously created, and fire up the Windows command line to demonstrate how to start up Mongo server and show you other configuration details regarding the setup. Now that I'm running in a command line and before starting up Mongo, I will want to create a default database directory where my database or databases, if you choose to have multiples, will be stored. On Windows, MongoDB stores data on the C drive in data slash DB directory. So let's go ahead and create those like so. This is a really important step because if the data directory did not exist or if it wasn't writable, the server would fail to start. Mongo allows you to choose a different directory. However, you will need to start it with a parameter pointing it to an alternative path. Okay, now let's look at the files in the default MongoDB installation directory, where you will notice a bunch of executables which play different roles and are responsible for different things. The ones we are interested in, um, at least initially, are called MongoD and Mongo, which is the server and the client application respectively. Let's start with MongoD first. MongoD executable is the build of the MongoDB daemon uh, for the Windows platform and its core functionality is to handle data requests, uh, manage data formats, and also perform um, background management operations. Uh, let's run it like so, simply calling it by name. And now you can see some startup details for example that mongo is running on port 27 or 17 um, database version and so on and so forth uh, to stop mongo we simply press ctrl c and mongo will also display some info on the shutdown status uh, we can also use shutdown shell command so let's bring it back up and open up another instance of windows command prompt uh, to shut it down using shutdown server function like so this effectively shuts down mongo's instance terminates all server connections and performs database cleanup tasks as you can see, the whole process is very simple and straightforward. And unlike other database vendors where you can literally write a book on all the caveats and options to watch out for and to configure, um, Mongo is very easy. You just run MongoD daemon and that's pretty much it. Now, speaking of Mongo daemon and coming back to what I said before about the two executables in the MongoDB folder, you saw me using MongoD that's the one with a D at the end to start MongoDB server. But what about Mongo? Well, Mongo is an interactive JavaScript shell interface to MongoDB, uh, which simply provides an interface for system administrators and developers 
task queries and operations directly with the database. I'll be using Mongo quite a bit in the remainder of this tutorial. So just remember that MongoD is how you start an instance, whereas Mongo is the shell um, predominantly used for the database query operations. Also, just a quick note on MongoD. Um, MongoD has quite a few optional command line parameters um, you can use to modify or tailor uh, its services to your needs. Um, let's look at some of those now. As you can see, Mongo provides a few optional switches which can be used to deliver some extra functionality or give you more flexibility of its default settings. For example, you can change the default port number or throttle the number of simultaneous connections. You can get a detailed description of all the options available from the Mongo's documentation on the company's website, so I won't go into details in this video. The only other thing I would like to mention is that those configuration options are typically stored in the file, um, which MongoD daemon points to, so we don't have to worry about typing all those out uh, when starting the instance. Finally, um, MongoD also sets up a very basic HTTP server that listens on a port 1000 higher than the main port, in this case 28017. This means that you can get some very basic admin info about the server by opening a web browser and going to http colon slash slash localhost colon 28017 to view some rudimentary information on Mongo status. So far we have looked at MongoD daemon, which is typically used to perform background management operations. Now as I mentioned before, in order to interact with the data and to run queries, Mongo shell is used and you can find it in the same directory as MongoD file. To run Mongo shell, we simply type in Mongo and to exit Mongo shell, we press Ctrl C or alternatively run exit command like so. Um, back to Mongo shell and let's cover some database basics. In order to show the database we are currently connected to on Mongo's local instance, we simply type in DB. As you can see, we are connected to the database called test, which is the default database Mongo creates. Um, in order to change the context and connect to a different database, we simply issue a command use with the new database name. Let's say we would like to connect to a database called new DB we simply type in use new DB and make sure that we are indeed connected to new DB. We run DB again. To see all of the databases, we can run show DB's command. Interestingly, Mongo does not provide any command to create a database explicitly. In order to provision a new database, we simply define a new collection, um, which is essentially a table in Mongo's jargon and save some data into it. First thing to do is to connect a database we wish to create. Um, I know it sounds wrong or strange, and yes, um, you heard me right, I'll be connecting to a database that does not exist just yet, but bear with me. Um, so let's say we would like to create a database called BI Cortex. Um, notice that there is no database created as yet. I will issue use BI Cortex to make sure that any further operations are done against that database only. Next, I will insert some dummy data into a collection called sample collection, um, which in turn will also create my database called BI Cortex. Let's run the following. Now let's check if our database was in fact created. Let's run show DBs again and there we go we can see that bi cortex was added to the list also i can run the following to check if the collection got created or this one to check that the single record or document using mongo's proper terminology was in fact inserted into the collection and 
finally, in order to drop the BI Cortex database, we issue DB dot drop database command like so. Um, if the last three commands look a little bit weird to you coming from the SQL background, don't worry, as it is a bit of a paradigm shift. Um, for me personally, the same was true when I first saw a bunch of MDX scripts um, used to manage data on the Microsoft OLAP database, so it will definitely take a few days to change your mindset. Uh, the good news is that it's doable, and the more you practice, the easier it becomes. Um, that's it for me for now, and if you'd like to find out more about MongoDB's other aspects, such as more specific query examples, or using some other tools to manage MongoDB and its data, I encourage you to have a look at my blog at bicortex.com. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.